guys welcome back to John's workshop and in this video we're going back onto the shaper the Atlas 7B or Acorn Tools as it is for me 7 inch shaper rebuild as part of the series of videos that I'm doing on that so starting at the top what's in this video largely now I've got the paint job done and you may have seen that if not go back and have a look at part 4 we're going to now start putting all the internals back into the main casting so the shafting the the ball gear, bits and pieces like that. So all the bits that I took out of the internals, we're going to clean all of those up and refit them in this episode. And then at that point, that then allows me probably in the next episode to move on to the remaining bits and pieces that, that need to go back, you know, need to be repainted, rubbed down, repainted, made good, and then refitted. So that will be coming up in the, the future episodes. But largely this one, we're going to get the bulk of the main bits of shafting and gearing put back into the machine. So without any more babbling I will bring you back very shortly at the shaper or at the bench as we start to clean up some of these very dirty bits and pieces and start fitting them back into the machine. So we're going to start in the reverse order that we took this apart. So this is the primary shaft or input shaft and this is the shaft that takes that's got a pulley on this end driven indirectly by the motor and this gear is the gear that drives the ball gear inside. So we've got two bearings this is just as it came out so these are proper Timken bearings when Timken bearings I, I think you can probably still get them but at a much different price to what you can buy Timken bearings today. Let's put that in shot so you can see you can see that so there's two of those in there. I'm just going to have a quick look at the at the race and just see what that looks like inside. So yeah there's no there's nothing There's nothing in there that's detrimental. Obviously you can see it's been run, but there's no real pitting or grooving or marking or anything of that nature in these. So we're going to clean this race up. The other one, well this cup up, that's the proper name. The other cup is in still in the machine in the position that it was in originally and I left it that way deliberately so that when I rebuild I'm getting everything back roughly where it came from so I'm just going to push things back in up to that original cup and so the next job now is to start cleaning all of this down I'm basically going to be using some brake and clutch cleaner and some WD-40 some sorry some methylated spirits and we're just going to squirt these bearings and the seals And just gradually start cleaning all of the old grease and muck out of these and we'll give them an inspection when we've done that and the same with these seals here we've got some grease seals here steel ones we're going to get into these grooves and clean all the old grease out of those and then we're going to inspect the shaft we've got some stuck on hard grease and things like that and also there's a flat on the shaft where the pulley grub screw bites and you can see that's slightly off the flat so it's kind of raised a, a portion up there so we're going to clean that and dress that to make sure that that raised portion is not there anymore and same thing at this end with this bearing we're going to flush that bearing through and clean all that up as well so and then I'm going to inspect the gear now the gear is in a pretty poor state if I'm honest and that is symptomatic of the fact that this machine has been run absolutely jam-packed full of swarf all stuck into the grease um, so there's quite some lumps and bumps and what, what have you on this gear albeit it still looks in reasonable condition apart from that so 
we're probably going to just maybe go around and just do a little bit of dressing if we think we need to on any of those gear teeth just to make it as good as it can be and then I'll bring you back when I've done all of that okay we've refitted our primary shaft in here didn't film it nothing too special the only thing worth noting is I knocked the shaft out from this side all the way through I left the bearing cup unmoved in this side and then what I've done is screwed this blanking cover back in up to that bearing cup locked it off in place and then refitted the shaft back in from the opposite direction up to the bearing cup which means largely the shaft is in the same position as it was originally so that's all nice all the bearings all nicely greased up no end float so that's the first bit of the rebuild done so I'm now going to move on to the bits and pieces that come onto the back of this piece here where the where the ball gear fits on so I'll bring you back when we're starting to clean those up okay so next we're going to attack our shaft that goes right the way through from one side to the other to alter our length of stroke so we've got the shaft itself the key some washers the nut on the end and the helical gear that meshes with the other helical gear which you'll see just shortly so I'm not going to bother showing you me do this I'm just going to give this a quick once over with some scotch bright quick once over with a needle file if there's any sharp burrs anywhere clean up the bits and pieces helical gears pretty pretty good you know there's no nasty lumps or bumps or anything out of it so we're just going to give that a quick clean up make sure it's all clean and I'll bring you back when we're all done and we're fitting that into the machine okay we've got our shaft all cleaned up ready to fit so we're just going to put a bit of oil in that bronze bush at that end and the same in the other end which I know you can't see and we're going to freeze the shaft through pop the washer on I'm going to pop the key in I'm just going to put a tiny drop of oil in the key weight This key's had a, had a bit of a hard life. It's having a harder one now. That was fortunate. Let's try again. I'm just going to give that a... a tap. Then got our helical gear, which is bronze. It should fit onto there. Then got a spring washer, our castellated washer, and finally the nut on this end so I'll just get a spanner and we'll tighten that up okay so we're now on with the next sub assembly that meshes with the one you've just seen me put in so this is the lead screw and lead nut that alters the length of the stroke and that's driven by this helical gear that meshes and there's a series of washers and nuts and a key nothing special about clean up on that it's just a bit of oil and grease and a bit of dirt I'm just going to clean those up you don't need to see me do that and I'll bring you back when I'm fitting that back into the machine okay so we've got our lead shaft 
lead screw, sorry, and lead nut and bevel gear all cleaned up and very nicely so you know this there's nowhere in the thread or the nut at all there's hardly zero well hardly any backlash in that at all so really good condition so we're just going to try and pop this back together now hopefully this all works Drop there. The lead screw in. Got one washer. We've then got like a tang washer that fits into a a bit of a keyway or a slot in the end of the thread to lock it. And we've then got our two nuts. Just finger tight that for a minute. Just going to drop our second one on. And we're just going to test this. Yep, super. That's all very nice. There we go. That's got our ram stroke adjustment mechanism all back together. So the next job now is to focus on the ball gear itself which is absolutely disgusting so I'll bring you back show you that before then we'll get a bit of clean up and then we'll get that fitted back in position. Okay so the next job now is this disgusting ball gear this is really thick well, it's almost like tar all over this so again nothing special about this I mean you can see how bad it is it's just sticking to absolutely everything so we're gonna show you what it looks like before which is like that I'm sure you guys don't want to watch me scrubbing away at that getting it all clean so I will bring you back when we've done the cleaning nothing special bit of degreaser bit of elbow grease and I'll bring you back when we're done and then we'll refit that into the shaper. Okay, midway progress report. So we're cleaning up lovely and all I'm using, I'm not bothering with degreaser on this because of how thick oil it is. This is the best stuff for that. Squirt it on, leave it, wipe it off. Very easy. Just thought this was worth pointing out. I am finding and I don't know whether the camera's going to pick it up, but if you look in between these dirty teeth that I've not done yet, you can see the ones where I've been around here. Come to the way I've not done. I just hope the camera's going to going to get this. Just every tooth has got 10, 15 bits of swarf absolutely stuck into this horrible sticky oil that they've used. And every bit of swarf when I've taken them out and examined them is flattened where it's been crushed in between the teeth of the two gears. So whilst you might think you're doing a good job by putting real thick, sticky, horrible oil on there that's not going to fling off so you don't have to oil it so often, actually on balance I think I'd rather run these things bone dry than do that to them. That is just, you're creating everywhere those bits of swarf are that get trapped between the gears you're just going to create pressure points which is going to end up in and a few of these teeth have got it bits of lumps just cracking and missing out of them so i thought hopefully that helps somebody else i am never going to use anything like that in here like chain lube or thick and sticky i'm going to check what the manufacturers say if i can find anything for the atlas 7b but i think this will be far better just running with some nice thin light engine oil on it and then any swarf that does find its way in is just hopefully going to drop off with the oil and not stay crushed in there I mean it's just it's, it's shocking to see really it's horrendous I've got no 
idea it was that bad until I started cleaning some of the black muck out of it. And I guess that's another thing, you know, with that thick black stuff. I mean, you can see every time I'm touching it, it's just horrendous. It masks, you can't see it. So, thought that was a bit of an update. Hopefully, no lasting damage done. You know, the, the teeth have done look pretty good. So, I will carry on after my little whinge and bring you back when I'm done. Okay, we've got our ball gear all cleaned up. Ready to refit. So, hopefully, we've got this in the right order. It's so long since I took this apart that I'm running on my memory a little bit, but I'm sure this goes on next. Something like that. And there are two cap head screws that are different. They're all the same size, but two of them have got slim down heads, which I believe are for these two. There we go, that's our ball gear fitted. On with the next. Okay, so next is the slideway. I didn't show you it before, you know, oily before, clean after, that kind of thing. You've seen enough of that in this episode. So, all I've done is there was a couple of sharp edges as well around the side, so we've just dressed where we needed to dress and cleaned all of that up. So, we're going to fit that now. So, we're just going to drop. Let's blow your oil on the lead knot. I've already oiled all the slideways in here. I'm just going to put a wipe of oil just on this back face over the whole thing to make sure that's all nicely protected. And we're just going to drop that on he says, onto the lead knot, with a bit of luck it fits, which it does, and that should now move nice and freely, which it does on the, on the lead screw for the adjustment for the stroke length, that's fantastic, and then the next job now is to fit the two retaining pieces that hold that in place and they've all been cleaned up and I'm fitting them in the same the same side that they came off just in case there's, there should be no difference there was no shims or anything under these these were just fitted directly on so I'm hoping that that's all going to be fine
beautiful. So next job now is just to tighten up onto the lead nut. There's a tiny grub screw in the top. I don't think you can see that, it's just where my finger is which just nips up onto that lead nut. So I'm just going to do that off camera and then I'll bring you back at the next bit. Okay, we're on to the final assembly for this video and the final assembly of the bits that need to go back into the internals of the shaper. So this is the lever arm. I think this is bronze. I think this whole thing is bronze and I've not got my rule with me but that's at least 5 8 15 mil thick if not thicker cast bronze and then machined as a bearing block slider block that sits in the middle here and slides up and down I'm not going to put that back in because everything is absolutely plastered in this thick horrible grease and absolutely full of swarf I'm surprised everything's not just been gouged to bits based on that. You can see it all down here. I mean, look, it's just absolutely stuck together with swarf. And so, yes, I will start attacking this again. There's nothing special. It's just clean up WD-40, some of this stuff where I need it and rags just gen generally cleaning it all up getting the muck off it okay we've got our final fit up of our final assembly on this side well certainly this side in the in the middle of the gearbox we've got quite a few bits in this assembly to put back in That's the first bit, the shaft. The second bit we've got this brass washer that fits on or spacer that fits on there. Now for the big arm. just fits in there didn't quite work out did it because I've actually forgotten the main bit is that bit. Oh, that's looking pretty good. I did say the last bit it's not. I've just got the front plate to do and go back on there. So I'll bring you back when I'm doing that.
And there we go guys, that gets to the end of part 5 of the Shaper Refurb. So that's got a lot of the internals back into the main casting. So that allows me now to move back onto the rest of the pile of bits and pieces that are on my bench and start you know, making those good. So the RAM probably next. I'm not sure what order yet, I've not made my mind up. But probably the RAM next and one or two other bits and pieces and they're going to need rubbed down painted as well as cleaned up and made good as well so we'll bring you back in part six for some of that later on so i hope you found that interesting uh, a bit of rebuild work and starting to see the shaper coming back to life hopefully very shortly so thank you to the subscribers thank you to the new subscribers and we'll catch you all very soon on another video when we'll be making something else